Umul Qara calendar from the 1950s to early 70s actually it was a very good calendar meaning it was very close to actual visibility its criteria was that if the moon is at least 9 degrees above the horizon on the 29th of the month then the next day would be the first of the month then unfortunately in 1973 it was changed to a very very bad criteria which is very different from visibility it started being related to conjunction before midnight in greenwich near london in 1998 uh, gregorian 1420 hijri uh, it was adjusted to reflect moonset after sunset uh, in makka and in 2003 it was further modified slightly to begin uh, to include the conjunction as a factor but these uh, new factors the moonset after sunset and so on they still do not reflect the visibility of the hilal and they are definitely not as good as the original model of the 1950s and the authors know that this new criteria is not reflecting the visibility but they say this is not for religious dates this is only for civil dates but the problem is that this calendar even though it's for civil use it sets the expectations and hence it affects or encourages the errors so we'd like to have this calendar Uh, reflect visibility in the ideal case or at the very minimum go back to the earlier criteria of the 1950s umul qura calendar saudi hilal setting committees or lajnat le royat al hilal these were started in about 1419 hijri by the ruling council of saudi arabia due to complaints of errors in the now states at present uh, uh, these committees each of them they include one scholar one astronomer one government representative and volunteers At the moment there are about six such committees in Saudi Arabia near Makkah, Riyadh, Qasim, Hail, Tabuk and Asir. And they uh, have the official results by naked eye sighting even though the astronomers in these committees may carry a telescope. Sheikh Al-Tamim indicated that he was against the use of telescopes as uh, saying that increases the takalluf on bird on on Muslims which Allah does not want. He wants ibadah to be simple. So this is very good news. Then why do we still have problems with the sighting in Saudi Arabia? Well what happens in Saudi is that the justice department majlis al qada al ala it pretty much ignores the decision of these six official hilal sighting committees and accepts the witness of just about any muslim and often the new month is declared when none of these six official hilal sighting committees see the hilal many people including scholars are in fact not even aware of the existence of these committees in Eid al Fitr 1420 i myself went with the makkah committee neither we nor the other five committees cited the hilal but the eid was declared for the next day when we came back to the haram we saw, heard the announcement and we were shocked in fact this was such a blatant error that even the moon set was before sunset in makkah for thursday evening and this time scholars uh, like yusuf al qardawi they issued a fatwa indicating that the muslims who celebrated eid on friday following the saudi announcement should make up for the one missed ramadan fast Also the next month there was a solar eclipse which also proved the mistake in Eid according to Sheikh Al Taymi's fatwa on eclipse which implies that if there is a solar eclipse anywhere in the world after your sunset then the next day is not the first of the month for your city So apparently it's not a huge number of witnesses which they get in Saudi uh, when they have these early sightings it's just a small number of people typically in Tabuk Hariq and Hauta Sudair Actually, the Tabuk person is no longer uh, is, is is more quiet now. But Harik and Hauda Sudair, especially Hauda Sudair Sheikh Al Khudari, who I have personally met. Actually, you can just drive up to Hauda Sudair from Riyadh and ask anybody who's the Moon Man, and they'll direct you to his house. So there are these special, you know, people few who are reporting this extraordinary early sighting year after year, and some of them they even claim to journalists of seeing the Hilal before Maghrib. Saudi astronomers are quite aware of the problem and they could be something else they are seeing they could be something even like a white hair in the in the eye of a person like it has happened with the aslaf before so we encourage group sighting in particular that people should go with these official hilal sighting committees now the saudi press press has been talking about these errors uh there are numerous uh, instances for example the arab news article of february 11 talked about the inaccuracy of Eid al-Fitr 1420 at Dawa magazine Al Jazeera uh, also uh, the Saudi television uh, Ramadan 2006 uh, 
Uh, the television uh, had an interview by Dr. Zaki Mustafa, the head of astronomy of the King of the Aziz City for Science and Technology, Riyadh, who was clearly saying that it was not possible to see the Hilal on the evening of September 22nd, but they did announce seeing that day. Uh, there are other uh, media reports like the Saudi al Watan newspaper, which is a very good and daring article called Testimonies of the Impossible by Hamza al Muzani. And this brother, he uh, they investigated the, the witnesses of Zulhijjah 1425 and they found them to be more than 80 years old. They found them to be more than 80 years old. And this was a very da daring article and the, and the author came under a lot of pressure, but alhamdulillah is fine. I have met him. Here is an article on the Arab news uh, which I talked about. And this article uh, is again very, very nice and it shows, for example, that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it shows, for example, uh, here, uh, let's enlarge this a bit so that you can read more clearly what it says. Uh, okay. It says it's not valid, uh, it's, it's, not, it's wrong to completely ignore the information through calculations and is citing scholars like Subuki before. And it's basically saying that the the uh, the task of Islamic ruling of the citing should be assigned to a number of committees, which three with three people in each committee working in different areas of the country, and sending information on the results to, of the mission, you know, to Darul Ifta. And if none, uh, if no committee is able to cite the moon, then the area in the area assigned to it, then no other testimony should be entertained. And if these committees are briefed about calculation of the birth of the new moon, they will be able to combine that knowledge with the results of their own missions and we avoid mistakes. So here it is making things, you know, rec giving recommendations as to how things should be done, uh, which is very good. And also it says, uh, for example, here, it says here that uh, what happened last Ramadan was that it was absolutely confirmed on the basis of astronomy that the new moon was impossible to sight anywhere in the Middle East Asia, Africa and Europe on the evening of January 6, yet that evening it was declared that witnesses have testified to citing it and Ramadan was ended that night. Here we have a case of assumed knowledge contradicting certain knowledge. The first should have been tested thoroughly and rejected like a court may reject the testimony of a witness after cross-examination. The point is that it is perfectly possible not to see something when it is present, but it is impossible to see something when it is not there. If the moon is not born yet, how can it be cited? and so on uh, so forth so this was a very good article uh, which referred uh, you know to 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 the mistake in saudi uh, citing this is that article i was talking about in al watan newspaper which talks about uh, testimonies of the impossible shahud al mustaqil and those 80 year old witness this is the fatwa of sheikh al qardawi which basically says that if you broke your fast following the saudi announcement then you can make up for the missed fast uh, here's uh, more uh, from the Arab Union of Astronomy and Space Sciences and again this uh, strongly criticized the Saudi uh, errors. Now, what about the scholars themselves of Saudi Arabia? The scholars like Sheikh Mohammed bin Saleh al uthaymeen who we met personally, uh, they were aware of the errors. He mentioned about a person seeing the waning crescent at Fajr in the same day evening the Hilal was announced, which is not possible. There are uh, scholars today, Alhamdulillah, like uh, Abdullah Suleiman al munayyam of Makkah Mukarrama, who are supporting using calculations to reduce the errors. And historically, uh, great Islamic scholars like uh, As-Subki have used uh, supporting, have also supported using astronomy to navigate this erroneous sighting. Also, Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah, who is very widely respected in, America, in, in, in Saudi Arabia, has also written on how soon a hilal can appear after the old moon scene in at Fajr disappears. Ibn Tamiya also writes that if the angle of the Hilal at sunset is less than a certain degree, it is impossible to see it. And if it is more than another degree, then we can see it easily, if there is no uh, clouds and so on, of course. However, in the middle of these two limits, there is a zone of uncertainty, basically. And this is a book of, of Fatawa by Ibn Tamiya, and it's a very detailed work, but somehow people are not even aware of all these works. In 1421 Eid al-Fitr, this was perhaps the first time in Saudi Arabia that several of these early witnesses were actually turned down. They were refused due to a solar eclipse. But of course, you will not have an eclipse every year. And when I asked a uh, sheikh in Mecca if we will still accept the witnesses from the same people the next year, and he said yes. And I was aghast. I said, well, you, you have discredited them. Why will you accept? But then that's what he said, and looks like the problem is not going not to go away 